Hello and welcome to Salubrious Skin with Dr. Irene podcast. This podcast is all about how to attain healthier skin. You may be struggling with a skin condition such as psoriasis or eczema or acne, or perhaps a condition that causes the skin to become unhealthy, such as PCOS or irritable bowel or Crohn's disease. Regardless of what your condition is, healthy skin is attained by having a healthy body. So my mission is about bringing a huge array of experts to your attention in various areas of health. I hope you find this information knowledgeable and insightful and helpful for your specific journey in having better health. Remember to always connect with us through Facebook at Dr. Irene Prantelos, Psoriasis and Healthy Skin. You can email me at info at salubre.com.au. I hope you enjoy the show and please feel free to give us any sort of insight into what you feel you need to hear in future episodes. Hello and welcome to Salubri Skin with Dr. Irene. We are doing a three-part series on eczema and today you'll be listening to part one, baby and child eczema, easy itch and redness with bamboo. I'll be introducing you shortly to a woman behind the brand Bamboo Bubby, Kelly Northey. At the age of six months, Kelly's son was diagnosed with eczema. Upon having this diagnosis, Kelly struggled to find a sleeping bag that wouldn't aggravate his skin. Frustration led to creation as Kelly designed a sleeping bag with fabric that would allow her son's skin to breathe while being cool enough to minimize itching and discomfort. With great relief came success. The bamboo bubby range started to grow to include sleepwear and bedding with parents elated that their little cherub would be able to sleep throughout the night without the relentless itching and waking. Hello and welcome, Kelly. Hi, Irene. (laughs) A little bit of an introduction there. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. I I feel I need to say congratulations because, you know, I I as a kid had psoriasis and, you know, I think at least at age 11 you can express to your parents, you know, I'm itchy or I'm in pain, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not comfortable, can we change your sheets, mum, or or whatever. Uh, But when it comes to a baby, you you don't really know where to to start and what to do and so to experience this yourself with your little one would have been such a challenging time to go through yeah you're right um yeah look it really did start out for us as a time that was very real and it was struggle straight for quite a long time i think um my son who's seven now was pretty much born with eczema yeah so i can't really remember exactly when it started but he was probably only weeks old and I remember asking the midwives about it and not really getting told much other advice than to just put some cream on it. Yeah. Um, what sort of cream did they suggest? Yeah, look, oh, it was um, rose hip oil was one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, you go through the pharmacy <laughs> trying yeah. all the different things, of course, which is what you do. Mm. Um, yeah, look, and just for us that whole initial time, because you're right, they can't tell you when they're a baby what is wrong and what's upsetting them and um, what might be even triggering the eczema. So for us, we had we struggled with a lot of things when he was um, a new baby. Um, For us, it was that we couldn't establish breastfeeding to start with. So um, I was had uh, what what was is an undiagnosed postnatally triggered autoimmune disease, which just made everything really hard, including breastfeeding. Yeah. Um, So fairly early on, we just had to make the decision to switch to formula. Yeah. Um, we had lots of trouble finding one that agreed with him and while we were in the process of still trying one formula after another, um, he, when he was about six months old, I think it was, we had our first appointment with a hospital allergy clinic um, and then they did all those usual tests that they do and it turned out he had a cow milk protein intolerance. Oh, okay. Yeah, so for us, um, that explained a lot. So it explained why he was a 
I used to describe him as just a difficult drinker. <laughs> so yeah. I think I was the only one who used to be able to like practically force feed him. He would drink no more than about 10 meals at a time. And so whatever. what was stopping him? Do you think he was in pain? Or? I think he was. I honestly yeah. think that he, it wasn't agreeing with him, but he couldn't tell us that. <laughs> so yeah. all that babies can do is cry and be upset and, and not sleep as well. So mm. um, it all goes hand in hand. And that was flaring up his eczema because obviously the milk wasn't agreeing with him as well. So once yeah. we worked that out, that was, that was a huge help. So I'm always grateful for those allergy tests because that really did narrow it for us. Did they just out of curiosity, because I did mm. those but a lot older, for babies, is it uh, the prick test that they do or do they take blood? Or Yeah, no, it was actually just the prick test. So, okay, and, so and his, even, even though he didn't have um, a really severe reaction, it was just enough to where they kind of said, look, it's probably, you know, the, the cow milk protein has shown up a little bit. Mm. For us, it was actually quite a dramatic difference once we changed formulas to, we ended up going with a goat's milk formula in the end. Okay. Um, and did trying, he enjoy that one? Yes, that was yeah. the first time he'd ever <laughs> drank a whole <laughs> bottle <laughs> in one go, uh, so much so that I went and made a second one. <laughs> and he drank thing. that too. So, yeah. So I felt awful as a mother because you just, yeah, you don't, think that you yeah you think you're doing the right thing I guess and yeah and obviously it just wasn't agreeing with him and yeah and then we luckily worked out at that point that what worked um yeah so he still even though it we worked out that trigger he was still itchy because it takes a while for it to start to agree with them after if you've been doing six or nine months worth of something that doesn't yeah yeah, so he was still itchy and um, he just never slept very much day or night, actually. So we were really sleep deprived at that point in time. Yeah. Um, and I do, I remember uh, just being so exhausted and upset myself because he was and you'd put him into his cot for his sleep and within minutes he would just undo all of that hard work you've done all day, layering on all the creams for his eczema oh, <laughs> and nice. scratching himself till he bled and, yeah. yeah, so within minutes. So it's really disheartening and I guess that's where the idea for my sleeping bag came into being. Yeah, because so, that, that experience, you know, to be completely honest, yeah. is very common. Yeah, uh, well, it is. I didn't realise at the time, though. <laughs> you feel quite alone when you're in there doing that. Especially, you know, po postpartum, your hormones are all over the place. I, I tell so many of my patients, I think I was a deer in headlights for a good six or so months, maybe even more. I would actually say my little boy is two and a half now, and I would say in the beginning of the year is when I, I started feeling more alert and with it mm. and and so I think all that has a, a massive impact on I think you're right yeah you, you definitely are not thinking as straight as you normally would and you mm. add in sleep deprivation in there and long-term sleep deprivation and it does yeah. terrible things to people yeah oh gosh so so then you you sort of started thinking should I should I make something myself or what was, what was a thought process behind yeah. recognizing you needed to sort of create something to ease well, your was, child's I discomfort? I much just desperate for some sleep to be quite honest. Yeah. Um, I remember I had a great one size sleeping bag that was in a summer weight fabric. So that was perfect. But all of the sleeping bags like that have no sleeves. So while that was the perfect weight and everything that worked for him, he was still able to scratch himself when he wore it. Um, and then we also had like a winter one that had sleeves. Mm. I found that that used to work better because I could fold the sleeves over his hands and that used to stop a little bit of the damage. But, but being winter weight, that was just too hot. And especially for an eczema baby, they tend to run hotter than other kids anyway. Yeah. And they do overheat easily and then that makes the itching worse. So I do, I remember one day I had both of them laid out on the cot and I went, oh, I think I'm just going to make my own and take the bits of both that I liked yep. and put them into a sleeping bag just for him that worked for him. And that's how it came into being really. Okay. Um, and so when, when you, so you just took the, the fabrics you had within those two and then kind of adjusted it. Yeah, well, look, originally the very first one that I made for him was actually just out of some soft cotton fabric that I bought from Spotlight, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I just was playing around with the design and, yeah, I made this sleeping bag and that seemed to work quite well for him. Um, and it was the fact that it placed a barrier over his hands that he couldn't get out of. So it wasn't yeah. like socks and mittens that he could just pull off all the time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so it placed the barrier between him. It kept his creams on underneath. So that was another big thing that was helpful because otherwise he was just rubbing at the creams and taking them off as soon as you put them on. 
Yeah. So with your product now, the bamboo Mm -hmm. um, sleeping bags, when you started producing that product, what was the reaction of, of parents around you that were using it for their children? Yeah, look, I was um, surprised and a bit overwhelmed <laughs> by the response, to be quite honest. Like, I didn't really expect to do this as a business. Like, yeah. Um, it wasn't, yeah, it was one of those accidental things. Um, it wasn't until I took the original sleeping bag that I'd made with my son to childcare, actually, when I had gone back to work. Okay. Um, because they were having lots of trouble. They kept saying to me, oh, we're so sorry, Kelly. We've, we've tried to keep his creams on and we tried to get him to have a sleep, but he just scratched himself and, you know, <laughs> and I take home this kid that was covered in blood and scratches. Oh, yeah. So I, I remember taking that in at that point and I was actually a bit embarrassed because it wasn't a normal sleeping bag. So <laughs> I was like, well, I know this sounds silly, but can you try sleeping him in this? It'll really help. And when I did that, actually, one of the lovely childcare workers that night, she'd come to me and she said, oh, look, we've seen like so many eczema kids over the years here. You should try selling this. Yeah. <laughs> because it just works great and, you know, made our life so much easier and he's so much happier and he might have even slept today, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it wasn't until that point that I even thought I could do something as a business. And then when I started to research um, a bit more about the best kinds of fabrics for eczema babies, that's mm. when the bamboo popped up. Okay. Mm. And it wasn't actually really well known about seven years ago. It was actually very hard to even source bamboo fabric here. Yeah. Yeah, so... I think uh, I remember going to a few stores and seeing it, but I think when, when my skin was at its worst, it was always cotton. I never really yeah. came across much bamboo. Yeah, and I'd never, you know, the whole time that I was trying to sort out his eczema, I'd never really heard much about it either. It's not, mm. It wasn't around then like it is now. Yeah. Um, so, yes. so how does it work? How, why, why is bamboo so good for sensitive and irritated skin? Yeah, so basically it's a, well, it's a natural fabric and it's, it's firstly, it's really soft. So it's soft and it's quite silky to touch. So um, when I was actually getting fabric samples to try and work out the best blend of the fabric to use, I got a whole heap of samples and I remember rubbing them against my cheek, like, like as if you were a baby trying to rub your eczema. And there was a really big difference between how the bamboo felt and how the cotton felt. Okay. Um, so for me, that was that was just it. That was what made me make the decision. But then, upon further research, like bamboo is actually highly breathable, so it has fibres that um, expand in the heat in the hotter weather, so oh, that yeah. um, air come flows out of the fabric better and faster. So that's what means it won't overheat them when they're wearing something out of bamboo. That's so interesting. I didn't know that. So, uh, so it actually expands. It so, does. It sort of expands. Oh. It's bizarre, but it expands. And that's why people love their bamboo socks. So, oh, right. um, okay. And it's also why people who tend to sleep um, and overheat at night time can sleep a whole lot better on bamboo sheets as well. Okay. Because okay. They, they're just really breathable and they, they do the opposite in colder weather. So in the colder weather, those same fibres kind of contract and they'll keep heat in amongst the body but it's just enough so that it always keeps you at just the right temperature so that's really smart isn't it i I didn't know that i know and and you honestly don't believe it until you've tried it i don't think yeah because i'm a cotton girl because you know now my skin isn't like it was so uh, i still do wear the cotton because it's just it's habit you know it's what i used to do but uh it's good to definitely have more bamboo around so with regards to your range Mm -hmm. what what items do you have what can parents kind of uh source to help their child sleep better and and minimize the itching and heat yeah well pretty much i like to say to people now that we've got their scratching covered 24 (laughs) 7 So oh, whether good. it's daytime, nighttime, and regardless of age now, like the range has actually grown quite a lot in the last six years. So um, we've got obviously our sleeping bag, which is a one size product, and that fits from around about that six month age right up until two or three years of age. Oh, okay. So that's quite good value. Like that will grow with your baby. So it um, has an adjustable sleeve design, um, which they can't get their hand out of and doesn't open up fully so it is a completely enclosed sleeve so Um, could i just ask you with the um summer and winter do you have different sleeping bags for the seasons i don't for the bamboo bobby bag because we have tried to make it out of some um 
thinner fabric, but then it's not sturdy enough to, because babies do thrash around quite a bit in their cots. Yeah, so, yeah. so we did try, but we, we have made it out of it. It is only a single thickness fabric. So it's quite, it's almost like a thin t-shirt fabric. Because I was thinking with that, uh, the effect of bamboo ha- having in various climates, yeah. you kind of wouldn't necessarily need it. So no. it's, quite, um, it's, it's, it's more, more money saved for parents because I know I, yeah. I tried the whole sleeping bag thing. My little boy didn't like the concept of being restricted. But, um, I did. I bought the summer one, the winter one, and then you got the 0.5 and the yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, it's confused. crazy. The room is 22. What does that mean? Does that mean I do a 0.5? Does it do a one? Yeah, I know. It is terribly confusing. And I was a bit over to having to just buy all these different things all the time. Yeah, it's crazy. I just wanted one thing. And I know, what I say to people now is you're better off layering them underneath and mm. then using the sleeping bag over the top, depending on how they are, what the weather is, you know, yeah. all those things because it can change so often. Yeah. Um, and then just having the one sleeping bag that you can just put on over the top and then they yeah. get used to that one thing too. There's lots of benefits in baby sleeping bags. In that yeah, baby. I love that. I love that yeah. it's just one because I literally yeah. can't tell you how many <laughs> hundreds I've spent and yeah. only worn them a couple of times because I've always hated them. <laughs> yeah, it's so frustrating. I know. And look, I, uh, as a parent too, I remember feeling really over that too. And I honestly couldn't get out to the shops or to shop for anything too. Exactly. So there was part of that was I just had to get it sorted and yeah, have the one thing that we just work yeah that's and that's so good so then do, beyond sorry. the sleeping bag what, what other yep. items okay yeah um then what we have um recently in the last oh, i think about the last 18 months we launched a kids pajama range okay so that starts from size one right up until 12 years of age fantastic because um, i was just overcome with people that were like my kid just didn't grow out of their eczema you know not all babies just grow out mm. of it like you're told that they do yeah um, so they've done really, really well. They've been really popular. Oh, that's and, so good. Yeah, they're really great. And then we've got the same pyjama idea, but for adults as well. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're actually great for not just for expert, anyone with sensitive skin or like, you know, psoriasis like you have. Yeah. Um, oh, we've had people use them for all sorts of things. People when they're undergoing chemo treatment that can't regulate their temperature very well. Yes, of course. The bamboo course. fabric is just so, because it's so soft and soothing as well. Um, they just find it a really comfortable thing to be wearing. Like when you, you And know. if they've had uh, radiotherapy, uh, yes. I know their skin, like say their chest or wherever, they, their skin gets very red. Yeah, and so warm. these won't aggravate it and there's oh. very few seams and they're just, yeah, they're just really comfortable to wear. So. And the thing is, most of us want to be comfortable when we're sleeping. So having a very soft fabric... I tell people who don't even have any skin issues, you know, if you want a pleasant night's sleep, you want to be able to use clothing or pajamas that's that's breathable. So yeah, absolutely, and mm. comfortable in all the right places and ways. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so do you have sheets as well? We do, because and that's sheets. that's another thing that the product range has grown into. Because again, I was overcome with people saying, "Look, what a, you know, should I be putting bamboo in the cotton on the beds?" And and yes, it can make a huge difference. So mm. we now have um, sheet ranges, and they're beautiful, luxurious sheets too that go all the way from cot size right up to king bed size so we can okay have family covered if need be and so I, I remember with me my mum used to change my sheets every day just because of the flakes and yeah. the whole dust mites and all that sort of thing so is bamboo quite sturdy in the sense to deal with multiple washes so yes, like absolutely like this sounds really bad, but I have one set of these sheets that I have been using <laughs> exclusively for a good two years now. Oh, wow, and they that's still good. wash up, hang up and dry exactly like as if they were new. They don't seem to wear like other sheets. Okay. Um, they're just a fantastic quality and thickness. They're apparently equivalent of a 1,000 thread count. Oh, right. Thing. Okay. So they, they feel beautiful and they are just, yeah, great to use in every way, really. That, that is very luxurious. I've slept in 1,000 yeah. counts because my mum has bought me those. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you definitely feel uh, like you have a beautiful night's sleep in those you situations. You do. You do. It feels like you're in a luxury hotel or something. Yeah. <laughs> you're at home. So, and it really does make a difference. It's, and like I said, people too that don't necessarily have skin conditions but who just tend to sleep hotter. Yeah. Um, find that those sheets can make a huge difference to how they sleep as well. 
Yeah, and I think when people are stressed, their bodies yes. do get hotter. Absolutely. Um, that's what I kind of deal with. And also uh, premenstrually, a lot of women have sweats yep. and, and feel hotter. And also, the, you know, those hormonal changes when pregnant women are in yes. their third trimester, they're really hot. So Absolutely. it really is, uh, it's not necessarily a skin thing because, like I said, I always say to my patients, especially the ones that are always hot, uh, you know, definitely use natural uh, materials in your bedding and your pajamas and all that sort of thing because uh, you're going to create more heat and yeah. whether they've got a skin problem or not people start scratching and, and damaging their skin and it's not an ideal situation no. um, so have you gone into clothing like day clothing we do have um, a day range we've got yep. some they're called scratch me not flip mitten sleeves okay um and they start from the same from the baby age so from newborn age right up to kids that are six years old okay um and they're basically like a little sleeve only that goes over one arm and across the shoulders and back down the other arm and yeah. they can be worn open or closed which is their benefit for during the day oh so, that's fantastic yeah so you can put them on when you send your kids off to uh, childcare or off to school or even if off to grandma's <laughs> yeah. um, and just know that, that they can be easily flipped shut so that yeah. it stops all the scratching damage when they are just having a scratchy moment. <laughs> yeah. And I used to find like my son, it was always, he'd always scratch when he was like resting or sitting in front of the TV and just having a chill out. He'd just be sitting there scratching the whole time. So you can just flip them shut when they're doing that. And then, but then when they're wanting to go outside and wanting to play, you just open them up. You don't have to take anything off them. They can just wear them underneath their t-shirt or whatever the whole day. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. Because I think it's also that mindless itching. You know, yes, um, they don't even know they're doing it. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the whole sleep issue. You know, yeah. I I definitely would do that. You know, yeah. you don't even know. And I have many many patients who comment about, oh yeah, you know, I was sleeping last night. I must have must have scratched because I've got all these little, you know, areas that yeah. scabs have formed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I know my son doesn't even have very bad eczema anymore, but it's oh, like a comfort good. thing. I will catch him by watching TV and having yes. a scratch and I'll go, stop scratching. <laughs> you know, it's even when I have patients that tell me, oh, you know, my scalp is itching, they start yeah. scratching their scalp. And then I do yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. Because <laughs> you, you know what it feels like. You, you yeah. go, oh, yeah, I remember that. That was pretty awful yeah and just yeah so I think there is I don't know with eczema but, but there's definitely um some memory in our skin when it comes to people with psoriasis suffering so absolutely um, maybe yeah. it's the same thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so how can listeners purchase bamboo bubby yeah so um they're available online at www.bamboobubby.com.au and we ship both Australia and worldwide through that oh, website. Fantastic. But on that website too, we also have a growing list of stockists who are baby stores or perhaps other specialist allergy or eczema stores um, yeah. where you can go and purchase your products alongside other baby or allergy products that you might be needing at the same time as well. Yeah, that sounds good because I think, uh, you know, a lot of people shop online these days. I think I'm probably one of the very few that, <laughs> that goes to stores. I, I just... Yeah. Will, no, or, I don't think uh, you're alone. <laughs> I'm kind of like an old school person. I like to kind of see and, and feel things. But, okay. you know, people leave reviews and, you know, that gives you a lot of insight into the into the product. Yeah, it does. And, and I remember too what it was like. I was very much stuck at home with this baby that was not very well and, you know, needing to be constantly having creams on so many times a day. It's impossible to actually get out to shop sometimes. Yeah, for sure. So, so yeah, we definitely... Um, yeah, have our online store gets all of our sales basically. Yeah, and and I think also uh, people can also see what you have entirely. Some stores may not stock everything. Absolutely, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. We have some stockers that do only stock one particular product. Some yeah. try to stock the whole lot. Yeah, you just never know what you're going to get at different stores. That's all. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you, Kelly. I I, I really appreciate your time uh, explaining this because I definitely didn't know. I know that bamboo is great, but I, I didn't know that the fibres expand and contract. Oh, I'm glad. Based well, I'm on glad it's helped. <laughs> and I think, you know, uh, like my little boy, 
has been blessed to have good skin. You know, I trust me, I, I keep a, a very uh, yes. close eye on it because of my own experience. I know. Uh, but I think, you know, it was such a tough time what you went through and, uh, you know, wholeheartedly feel the pain that you went through. But I think, you know, in producing this product that's going to help so many parents potentially worldwide alleviate their little baby's pain and, and itchiness is remarkable. So thank you for doing all that hard work. Some people, you know, they kind of deal with this stuff and, and move on, whereas you took the initiative and, oh. and really created a change that the community needs. So Yeah, well, so, thank you. No, it, and it was actually driven from people that came to me in the end. Like mm. when, when I launched the website that I – it wasn't a very good website back then, but, yeah, when I launched that and I launched the Facebook page, it was people coming to me through the Facebook page and needing – somebody that just understood where they were at that's what made me kind of go oh I really have to do this so. yeah because I, I hear about it all the time you know I, I can't tell you how many times I hear mm. uh, about mums you know trying to deal with this and, yeah and it's know, really it is very lonely you do yeah. feel like you're the only one with a child that's like this and you can't get out to all those mothers groups and things that other people just seem to be able to do easily and yeah. and I think the challenge is is that and I know my mum experienced this a lot with me is that everyone has an opinion so yes. <laughs> you know if you go to these little communities and then and then people are going oh try this try that and yeah, after how a many time, things yeah. yeah you know and I had even people ringing me uh you know oh, Irene I saw um on a current affair they had <laughs> this cream that apparently cures psoriasis <laughs> and I'm thinking seriously I'm not even away from this in my own home <laughs> yeah yeah I know everybody means well but it is mean overwhel well. it's overwhelming and you do you would spend all of your money just trying everything one thing after another and I think if you're yeah. in that manic state of of no sleep your baby's crying you have no idea why they're crying yeah you know, and that's why I'm doing this three part series on eczema because, right. you know, it's just to simplify it. It's not, it's not as complex as, you know, uh, unfortunately it, it could be uh, made out to be, but yeah. the reality is, is that obviously you need uh, topical clothing that doesn't irritate the skin. And that's, that's what your Absolutely. products do. Yeah. You and they work, that. they work in conjunction with whatever treatment you are yeah. going through. And that's, and that's the thing you have to, natural. yeah, yeah. I mean, and dietary, uh, you know, the next, the next episode I'm going to do is, is on um, baby and child eczema specifically things that people can do. So diet and lifestyle and all that yeah, sort of thing. Brilliant. Yeah. And, you know, uh, incorporating something like a bamboo bubby will only assist because I have worn clothes that haven't been natural and I have literally my legs have been on fire oh, that's how hot yes, and I believe it, yeah. you can't stop yourself from scratching and you know as an adult you know I'd get fluid retention because of the inflammation in the skin mm. and it's almost like you wanted to to just uh, run into this cold bath just mm -hmm. to to strip that fire away from you. So, yeah. you know, it, it's really, it's a major factor and, and people need to um, definitely take this as a first step if their little bubs have eczema, even if it's mild, because the thing is, is that, you know, a couple of little spots can progressively create that discomfort mm. and, and progress to more and more. So, yep. and, it, and like you said, it's like silk. So it's, it's beautifully soft for them. So. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's nothing you can find that's softer, I don't think. Because <laughs> yeah. I well, tried them all. <laughs> I know, you tried everything. I, I completely understand that situation. I, I wholeheartedly believe I've tried every uh, treatment and yeah. uh, you know, product out in the market in, in those years that, it, that my skin was terrible. Yeah. So No. But um, be sure to check out bamboobubby.com.au. And thank you for your time today, Kelly. No, thank you too. And thank you for doing this series. It sounds really interesting. Yes, I, I hope people find it interesting. <laughs> I'm sure they will. No, I'm sure they will. If I was a new mum again listening to this, I would find this so useful. So yeah, thank you. And that's, and that's the thing. I, I'm trying to put myself in, in their shoes as I once was. Uh, as far as a, a patient's concerned, like a, a, a person struggling. So everything I needed to know back then, I'm kind of delivering that information. Brilliant. So hopefully um, people can utilise and help their little ones and even adults if that's the case. So uh, now thank you for tuning in to another episode of Salubrious Skin with Dr. Irene. And I hope to catch you in future episodes. Bye for now. Bye.